ramblings from Armenia here. Bit of a sad one so you're gonna have to bear with me. My trip to Armenia was brilliant. I was passing through Odessa in Ukraine which is beautiful this time of year and then crossing the Black Sea over to Yerevan in Armenia. Armenia is spectacular. Once you leave the hustle and bustle of Yerevan behind you've got high mountains, deep canyons and the magnitude of it is just breathtaking. Anyway, aside from the scenery, I found myself wound up in the Institute of Zoology after touching base with Luba Balian, who invited me in for a chat. The Institute is housed on the fourth floor of an amazingly impressive old Soviet building, quite dark and eerie with high ceilings and long corridors. And I mean, the Museum of Taxidermy doesn't really help much for that cause or either, to be fair. So after meeting with the team, I sat down to have a chat with Luba, who actually told me that they're in the middle of a quite terrible ecological disaster. It's turned out that hundreds of the country's iconic storks, you know the ones that live on the top of the telegraph poles? Well they've been turning up covered in a black oily substance which has rendered them flightless. Many have been seen walking around the villages covered in an oil, but it's not a commercial oil, it's suspected that it's been released into the rivers from fish canning factories. And now these storks are unable to return back to their nest to feed their chicks. And if they do return back to the nest, they just smother their own young in the oil as well. And this means that the chicks can't learn to fly. It's an absolute disaster and Armenia could be looking at losing two generations of these storks. Anyway, the media got hold of this story and there's been a nationwide outcry, which has resulted in the government rounding up enthusiastic volunteers to try and clean up this mess. But Luba told me unfortunately this hasn't gone to plan. And actually the techniques they used have irreversibly damaged their feathers and even killed a couple. It really is a sad situation. However, the positive news is Luba and her team of scientists have got in contact with some oil covered animal specialists from Germany. Of course. I mean, it's actually a shame that there even has to be a specialist group like this anyway. But they've given them some specific methodologies and cleaning agents, which has actually already been shown to have incredibly positive effects. And the two stalks which I saw at the Institute are already looking a lot better. It's still early days in this ecological disaster. And hopefully the steps that have been taken so far are just the start of restoring this species to their former glory. I guess it's important to recognise that at the moment, these scientists are just on their own with limited research from funding, paying out their own pockets to try and save something they love. And this is something that I think we could all learn from, using your own time and resources to save that something you love. So let's give these guys some support, share the stories, and hopefully come the end of summer, these storks will be able to return to their winter home in Africa. Ramblings, out. Eventually, after wiping out everything, we will get to the point where we're going to vanish, which is fine, but not for us. It's fine for the nature, because nature is a powerful regenerative organism. It's huge, it's strong, and people even don't understand the entire potency of that natural setting that we're living in. The nature will come back when the humans are gone, that's for sure. But I think we have to start thinking a little bit earlier, right? Do we want that? Do we want nature without us? Maybe not. If we are thinking in terms of uh, humanity with nature, then we have to stop at some point. Because nature is always on the winning side. Nature is power.